Today we're talking about gardening with guinea pigs. Okay, so why would you want to garden with guinea pigs? Well, first of all, they're really cute. Secondly, their poop is wonderful fertilizer. You don't have to compost it first because it's not hot, it's not like chicken poop. It's not gonna burn the roots of your plants, but I like to compost it just to make sure that all the bacteria and nasties are gone. Next, guinea pigs are great little lawnmowers. This isn't really something that we do in the US, but it's really common in the UK. People love their guinea pigs and they'll fence off a little part of their garden or yard and let the little guys run around and graze. That's what they're made to do in the wild. We keep just a small herd of male guinea pigs in our yard and we don't have to mow our backyard at all. They keep everything nice and short, almost like a putting green. It's really short and they eat all the weeds and everything that I would either have to pull by hand or use chemicals, which I'm totally against. Speaking of chemicals, should be pretty obvious, but I feel I need to state it anyways. If you're using chemicals in your lawn or garden or anywhere, that would not be safe to graze guinea pigs or really any other animals, not your chickens. Stay away from the chemicals. One kind of reason that you might want to raise guinea pigs is that, cover your ears, if it were a life and death situation, guinea pigs are edible. Now, I love my guinea pigs. I do not raise them to eat. I do not plan on eating them. They are wonderful little pets and they're the best landscapers in the world. Um, but you know, it's just nice to know if it was a life or death situation, they're edible. Certainly in South America, people eat them. It's a normal thing. And even some places in the US, some restaurants serve qui. Um, I can't imagine that it would taste very good. And, and please don't get guinea pigs to raise them for me. Don't, don't get them to eat them. But it's just, you know, it's just one of those things where they're so easy to care for. Uh, it's just one more thing. Like if you needed to, that's an option, but certainly would not be easy to, to do that. So what you need to know, um, the reason that a lot of people in the US don't do this is because we have so many natural predators. So you really need to know your area. Um, now, for instance, I'm in an urban setting. Our yard is completely fenced in with tall cinder block wall. Um, we have lots of trees and shrubs and just natural growth that they can go and hide under. I also provide some little, um, little houses for them to hang out in. Uh, and so, I think because of the ecosystem that we have here between all the animals, it works. So um, there are snakes in Arizona. We don't really have any. I've only seen one ever, uh, and it was a dead baby snake that my cats killed. So, um, and we've lived here for almost 10 years. So I'm not concerned about snakes, though that, that is a risk. We do have hawks that fly over. Uh, and they don't come down in our yard because we have these huge Muscovy ducks, which are really almost more like geese. They're really, really big and they're harmless. They wouldn't do anything to a hawk, but the hawk doesn't know that. So it creates a little bit of safety for these little guys. If you have raccoons, wolves, coyotes, that's a big one. We have coyotes around here too, but again, we have our tall fence and I actually have uh, it's, it's extended even beyond that with a special cat fence. It's not very pretty, but it, for the most part, keeps the cats in and it does keep other animals out. If a coyote really wanted to get in, it absolutely could, uh, but it looks cumbersome, so, so they don't. I mean, but they could if they wanted to. Now, I also free range my ducks and my chicken, so, you know, really it could go after any of these little guys, but it hasn't been an issue. So just because I haven't had issues with predators doesn't mean that you won't. In fact, it's likely that you will. So you really need to know your area. I mean, that would be awful. It wouldn't be in the, the guinea pig's best interest. And wouldn't you feel bad if you put the little guys out there and, you know, they were eaten by something? I mean, that would just be awful. You know, owls are another thing. So what you could, what you could really do is just make them a nice little tractor with a lid and you can move it throughout the day or maybe twice a day, giving them fresh grass, and then you can collect their manure, compost it, and use it in your garden. Speaking of compost, 
they are natural composters. So whatever you feed them, we have tons of scraps. Whenever we have veggie scraps, um, there's just really a few things that they can't have. But for the most part, um, there are little garbage disposals. And instead of throwing it in the trash or throwing it in the compost bin and waiting for it to break down, they break it down and turn it into a brown gold immediately. Okay, other things that you need to know about this. Um, we talked about predators, that's gonna be a big one. Diet, you can't just throw them out there and expect them to fend for themselves, both predator-wise and as far as their diet goes. They are going to need a regular guinea pig pellet, which should be Timothy hay-based, enriched with vitamin C. They need that vitamin C, they're not always gonna get it, enough of it from the grass or weeds that they're eating. And as far as weeds go, there are certain weeds that are toxic to them. So you just, again, wanna do your research. It's definitely not something where you can just be like, oh, let's try it. You wanna do your research, but it can really pay off if you do. So why do I keep males and not females? Here's the thing. I tried it originally with females because I had pet female guinea pigs and I wanted them to enjoy the outdoors and they really do enjoy it. They actually get angry when I bring them in. I use males because males don't stick together in a tight herd the way that females do. Females will overgraze one area because they like to hang out together. Males are definitely more, uh, they're more dominant, but they're definitely more like, give me my space, you have your space. So they spread out and that way they take care of the entire lawn. If you just have females, they're gonna clump together in one section. They're all just gonna be pooping in the same spot. And it's just, it's a lot of work to clean up. Whereas these guys really, it's not a lot of work. They're really easy. And, you know, I just make sure that they have pellets. I give them hay as well, even though they have the grass, which is better for them. Um, and they are just living their good little life out there. And here's a huge factor. You have to consider climate. Guinea pigs do not tolerate heat well. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. It's extremely hot here in the summer. Right now it's the middle of winter. I'm wearing a tank top. It's the middle of winter and it's gorgeous outside and they they love it they can be in that they actually do really well with cooler temperatures as long as it's not you know freezing or below freezing so i do have a special shed set up for them that they can go into it's got some nice warm bedding for them so um in the in the winter like right now when it's cooler at night they have a nice cozy warm dry place to be and they don't have to be outside in the cold in the summer Really, I mean, you can bring them inside. We have an extra room that we use just for pets. And so I don't mind bringing them in and having them in over the summer, especially once we start to, to get really high in temperatures. Um, some other things that I've tried successfully, uh, and I've never lost a guinea pig to heat stroke. So I should say that, and I'm, you know, I'm in Phoenix. However, we do not have humidity. So if you have both heat and humidity, um, they're just, it's not, it's not a good combination for them. Um, this is my only long hair male and I definitely, he's due for a trim, um, but definitely in the summer or, you know, even in the spring or fall, if it's still warm, I'll trim his hair really short because I feel so bad for him. Something that I've successfully done is that I have dug deep burrows for these guys. They're, they're not going to dig burrows. That's not what they do. But if they find one that's wide enough and big enough and doesn't feel too enclosed, they'll go ahead and use it. And so they do. They have used the, the burrows in the summer before. I've tested it with my heat gun. They stay really nice and cool down there, actually. And I keep their food and water right near the burrow entrance. And that's another point. They need to have fresh water all the time. Um, so yeah, and, and they've been able to do just fine in the summers here. They probably don't love it. Um, and so if it does get really hot, I just bring them in. I have a cage inside that I can keep them in. And at least, I know they hate it. They'd rather actually be outside, it seems. But at least that way I know that, you know, they're not suffering. Um, and of course, if you live somewhere with cold winters, you're going to need to bring them inside as well. Guinea pigs have great personalities. They're really sweet and easy to care for. I love looking out my windows and just seeing them kind of running around, sort of hopping. <laughs> They're really precious. And I love that they take care of my lawn for me so I don't have to mow. All right, well, that's a fairly good summary of why I use guinea pigs in the garden and how I do that. Just in case you were wondering, this is Georgie and he's a little sweetheart. We took him in as a rescue. I wouldn't normally recommend a long hair guinea pig for grazing them outdoors, um, but uh, I try to stay on top of his, his hair. 
We've actually taken in quite a few rescues, so I haven't really had to spend any money on adopting these little sweethearts. They all came from people who said, the kids don't play with them anymore. So I feel good about giving them a life where they get to run around and be outside and be in the sunshine and just enjoy life and have fresh air versus just being in a cage all the time. As always, let me know in the comments if this is something that you've tried or you have information on, share the wealth. Maybe this is something that only I'm interested in, um, but I haven't really seen a lot of videos out there, so I wanted to make one because I'm just loving having them as my little free landscapers.